So that tells you something right there. Nobody in the civilian world can get or be authorized to modify aircraft. Even relic warbirds with working gun turrets and bomb bay doors, but they have them. Is there something that I missed? Go ahead and recap with me. Absolutely, uh, Chris. Um, what from from any of your uh, talks that you had with any other um, from from any of your talks that you've had with anyone uh, that you were having lunch with there, or any other employees or contractors that you might have came in contact with, uh, was there any mention of any other secretive craft on that facility? Uh, for instance, I know that towards the nor uh, west end of the facility, I believe, there is a black helicopter pad, and I believe the helicopters can actually emerge from an underground uh, base or structure within that pad and taxi out to a point to where they take off. That's just my observation. I'm not sure of that. Um, and also, uh, was there any talk of any type of strange experimental craft that could potentially be uh, UFO type technology or uh, anything like that of the sort. Okay, as far as the uh, as far as the black helicopter pad and the underground facility there, I would not doubt it one bit. Uh, I never heard anything about this until tonight, but on the same token, I would not doubt it. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, I was only there for three months, and therefore I may not have had that level of trust to be hearing uh, any sort of information in regards to that. Uh, as far as US UFO aircraft, uh, naturally I'm familiar with Area 51 and Area S4. I'm also familiar with the rumors that it's been shut down. Uh, I don't believe that it has been totally shut down. However, I do know that a lot of their operations has been switched over to Wright-Patterson and also another base in uh, northern Utah, just out of Salt Lake, and far, as far as UFO technology and that sort of thing. It's been operations uh, uh, basically since 1940-something, in which I'm referring to everything that uh, was collected by the U.S. military in Roswell, New Mexico, was... Uh, yeah, it was eventually crated up and carted off to Wright Patterson in an underground. Absolutely. Now, uh, shifting gears a little bit, because I'd like to have you on the show uh, for a full show where um, we're actually able to, to really get into this, and uh, I want to uh, actually catalog the show uh, and record it perfectly uh, with a screen capture program so it could be posted on YouTube, so you, you know, however you want to prepare for that. Uh, but uh, let's move on. It, uh, I know you're an aircraft expert, basically, and uh, I, I want to know some of your uh, thoughts on this uh, this this kamikaze uh, pilot that flew into the IRS building today, and and also if you could line out some of the real technical details of the type of craft that this uh, guy was piloting, and uh, you know what kind of damage that craft possibly could inflict on a building uh, of that nature, and if you think that the damage to that building coincides with uh, the actual specs of that craft uh, crashing into such a building, and also your personal outtake on the whole uh, situation, uh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, the particular issue, I was discussing this on my channel earlier with a few guys, but uh, this particular issue has everything to do with the world economy, with the national economy. Uh, I believe we're going to be seeing more and more of this sort of thing, and not necessarily with airplanes, because different people have uh, different capabilities, uh, different tendencies. But uh, the worse the economy becomes, the more desperate and broken people become, uh, the more of this you're going to see, because uh, it's just like an analogy that uh, I mentioned earlier today. Uh, when you take a person and they feel that they're backed into a corner and have absolutely nothing left to lose, 
eventually they will switch from the defensive of trying to save their life into the offensive of trying to save their life or to retaliate against those who are either are or in their perception are oppressing them in some way causing their lives to be in ruin and naturally in this country today and in many countries today there are literally millions of people in this particular situation so within the issues of the human psyche uh, one can any complex thoughted animal whether it be a human whether it be a dog whether it be a cat if they feel they're being pushed into a corner and you start jabbing at that animal with a sharp stick sooner or later the animal will it will stop it will stop trying to defend itself and stop trying to get away from you and it will attack it will switch from defensive to offensive in attempts to either save its own life or to help save the lives of others this man today was a broken man and when I say broken I'm not necessarily saying psychologically however one could presume one could presume that the man was in financial ruin he may have lost his family he was obviously some form of business opera uh, on a, on a picture uh, entrepreneur uh, the man had his uh, I presume he had his own airplane even in today's economy that Cherokee that Piper Cherokee is dependent on how it was outfitted with instrumentation and a few other things could be anywhere from forty to seventy thousand dollars okay so this guy wasn't totally destitute unless unless the plane was a rental um, of course then again in this economy he wouldn't be able to sell it either because nobody's got the money to buy uh, within the issues of the aircraft this particular aircraft which they identified as a Cherokee was made by Piper Aviation Corporation it was originally built in Vero Beach Florida now, Piper has moved around in its headquarters over the years uh, for many years back during the years that this particular aircraft was built by Piper their headquarters was in Vero Beach Florida in later years they moved their uh, facility up into either New York or Pennsylvania but now Piper's back in Vero Beach uh, 